and welcome to another episode of Foo Bar. In this week, I want to show how to do a bend bridge with CDK. I have done a lot of videos on a bend bridge, but they were all with some. And in all the videos, you ask for the CDK version of it. So you ask, you get. I always say if I get the same questions three times, I make it happen because it's easier than just to reply you individually. So yes, keep the comment coming and let me know what you want to see. I usually try to come back to you if I know the answer or I have time to answer this. But yeah, so this is going to be a two part video. So it's this part one and then there will be a continuation next week where I show you how to do uh, the same application I did with uh, SAM with Event Bridge. So we will go into these uh, SAM advanced events or something like that. I, I will show you the, the GitHub later and we will migrate it to uh, CDK. So you see how you can use uh, the, all the things that I, I show you with SAM. So in the first video, we will go into the basics, basically triggering a function with a rule and then putting an event in the event bridge and how you build the different resources. And in the second part, we'll go into a little bit more advanced concepts like API destinations, dead letter queues, and uh, using uh, one bus to create a log of everything. So without further ado, let's go to the code uh, because that's uh, <laughs> what we are going to do here. Before starting with the code, as always, give it a like, subscribe if you're not subscribed and all the things, it's free. You help me out a lot and keep this channel growing and been updating every week with new videos around serverless. So we are going to start from the Sam Advanced, advanced demo and if you, uh, I will not show you how I build this demo. This applies uh, the CDK or some on how I design this application. That's a different video. Uh, I will link it in the description box. I will link you a lot of the some videos in there because I explained you the concepts <laughs> in those videos and I might not repeat myself. So go and check that uh, design video if you want to know how I created the event-driven application and how I got to what I'm going to show you today. Today is all about CDK. Another thing I'm going to do is basically, you will see that I will be copy pasting the code, the functions, everything that is not infrastructure. I will take it from uh, the SAM project and pasting it in CDK. And you might be wondering why, and the answer is because I'm lazy. And also to show you that it's the same exact function. You don't need to change anything in order for this to work. It's the same, same uh, code. The only thing we change is the infrastructure definition, basically in some the template YAML and in CDK, we are going to have all these um, boilerplate. We like the, it will be inside the leaf. We are going to build everything in one stack. So uh, you can check, uh, everything will be in the readme, so you can check it out. And also in the readme, you will find the design table that it's uh, related to that video on how we design this. So, so I have already um, built the whole thing and I can show it to you now, uh, it's easier. So I have already built the whole application and I want to show you the infrastructure and a little bit of the code so you can follow. Basically, almost everything is copy paste from that some project except uh, what is in that uh, lib folder. Everything else is basically stolen directly from there, like the libraries, the layers, the everything. But what is new is what is inside this lib. And here is the definition of the stack. And this is what we are going to do with CDK. And in here you will find the whole application. Like we did in some, because this is a demo, uh, I throw everything, uh, all the different microservices into one stack also the layers and everything. If you want me to refactor this in a different way to have individual microservices at their own stack, let me know in the comments. Maybe that's something we can, uh, I can showcase you how to do that. But for now, everything is in one uh, stack because it's so much easier. <laughs> um, and then uh, I have the bus as well in the whole stack. Everything is here. So we will start from the order microservice and this is the uh, first microservice we have. Uh, we are trying to simulate an e-commerce site. So uh, an e-commerce, first we get the order, we put it in the database, then we do the 
uh, inventory handling, making sure that there is enough inventory, and then payment, getting the customer information for, for calculating the delivery, like all kinds of things. So all those are different microservices. So the first one is the order where uh, basically we are getting an um, a trigger from an API gateway. This is the only function that gets triggered from outside. Basically, the user puts the uh, does the pay or proceeds to make an order in the website, and this triggers the flow. So we can see now a normal function, and uh, we can see also an API gateway there. So if we go to the code, uh, we can we can see it, what it seems like there. So we are using these two layers. So the layers, if you don't know how to use them, I have a whole video on how to do layers with some. But in this uh, GitHub repo, you can see how to do layers with CDK. So go ahead and explore how to do the layers. It's the same concept. Everything that I show you in the sound video, you can take and, uh, and do for CDK, except the infrastructure definition. But you can find it in this, in this code repo. Then we have a table and one event bus. We have one bus for all our um, all our events, and then we have one uh, API gateway that will be triggering that on the get path, and with that uh, on the get method with that path. So when we open the order code, we will see that part of it is triggered by the event, and part of it is triggered by the uh, API. Then after the order is created, we are sending that event to the inventory service. So we can check the inventory microservice. That is again, one function and a table. And then uh, you can see uh, here more, more things about the band bridge because this is again, uh, instead of being triggered by a API gateway, now we are going to get triggered by a rule. So what I do here is first um, create an inventory event rule. And this is a rule that says in this event bus, uh, the rule needs to trigger whenever there is anything with this detail type. In this case, item reserve, payment made, payment failed. Um, and then we will attach that rule to trigger that Lambda function as a target. So whenever this rule gets triggered, then uh, the Lambda function gets invoked. <clears throat> For each rule, you can have up to five targets. So in this case, we have a Lambda function. In the following video, you can see how to do it with API destinations. So uh, this is different than some. In some, we do everything in the same uh, resource. In here, we need to create the rule as its own resource and the target uh, later on. Well, we can create the target inside the rule as well. Also, because the inventory is sending an event, we need to uh, give permissions to, to the function because everything in AWS is born without permissions. So we need to add to that function the role of uh, put events in that, uh, in that bus. So you can see it there. And you can see I created that policy and I will use it in all the functions that are putting events into that uh, bus that it's just basically allowing to uh, whoever has this policy in the role to be able to, to put events. So after uh, reserving the item, we can see that uh, we will reserve the item and then we are going to uh, get the information from the item and then we are moving forward to the next service. So if we open the code, for example, for the order, we can see that there is the two invocations there, the one for API gateway that is creating an order and putting that event in the, uh, in the bus. So the order function also needs to have the permission to put the event in the bus. Um, and then this is uh, sending the event. This is exact the same code that you will get with some. This has not changed. Uh, and then we have the inventory that gets triggered uh, when that happens. So we are also giving that permission. Then we can check the payment microservice that is more or less the same. We have the rule, we have the function, we have the, the things that the rule is getting triggered with. In this case, it's a detail type of delivery estimated or item return. And here you can build these things as you will do uh, with some as well. There is some limitations with CDK because of the types. Uh, in some cases, it doesn't work, but I will show you more on that on the next video. 
But in here, uh, it's, it's very straightforward. You can go more levels down if you want. In this case, we are just using the detail type because it, it works for my use case. But if you want to go uh, to more detail on the event payload, you could do that as well. And then we um, put that, uh, that rule, we add the target of the Lambda function. And we do that for everything. Then for the delivery service, we have the location service place index calculator and route calculator. And we create the functions with access to that. If you don't know what location service is or what is place calculator or route calculator, I leave you a playlist if you want to know more about using that service. But basically there are services that allow you to calculate the road between point A and point B and you can calculate the distance. And we are using that to estimate how much the delivery will cost. And then uh, we, um, we are giving permissions to the function to execute those uh, operations in the search uh, in the location service. And again, we are uh, creating the rule and adding that as a target. So this is how you do it. This is super simple. The uh, create a rule, uh, put how you will trigger that rule and then attach a target to it. And that's how you do it. Then from the function perspective, you need to give permission to the function to send a put an event and then use the AWS SDK to put the event. And that's it. Uh, in the next video, we'll look at uh, more details on a little bit more advanced topics. So if you want to know more, stay tuned. And that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and the code and everything is in the description box. So go and check it out. I see you next week. Ciao, ciao.